Welcome to Concord Elementary's second annual One School, One Book. This is Mrs. Hutchinson, and I'm very excited as your principal to begin this year's book. This year's book is called The Adventures of a South Pole Pig. It is a novel of snow and courage by Chris Kurtz. Chapter 1. Mama, why do we live in a cage? Flora dug in the dirt at something hard and rusty. Honey, don't do that. Her mother knows her way. It's not a cage. It's a pig pen. Same thing, said Flora under her breath. How unlucky she was, born with adventurous hooves that were stuck inside a pen. But she wasn't given up. If there was a way out, Flora said to herself, she would find it. She had already packed down trails to each corner of the pen. She had poked her wet snout through every wooden slat to smell the other side. And she had dug holes all along the pen's perimeter. Usually the only thing hiding under the surface was more dirt. Until today. Maybe this hard and rusty something would bring a change in routine. As soon as her mother turned, Flora went back to digging. She scratched away busily until the thing popped out of the ground. I knew it! Flora gave a little squeal of joy. Now she had to see what it could do. Flora! shouted her mother. Flora took a step back. Her mother trotted over, and close on her heels were three brothers. Flora had seven, so there was always at least one around to watch her get into trouble. Rusty pieces of metal are very dangerous. Why do you insist on earthing things better left alone? Said her mother. Flora stamped the ground. If it's unexplored, then it needs to get dug up. I see, said mother. Well, if it's sharp and rusty, then it needs to stay unexplored and underground. Her mother used her snout to nudge the, and scoot the nail over to the wooden fence where there was a space between the ground and the lowest board. Mama, wait! I'm not done with that thingy yet! Flora shoved herself between her mother's legs. Her mother pushed back. You most certainly are done with this thingy, little one. With a firm kick, she spun the nail under the board and out of sight. Flora screwed her face up, not sure if she should stomp or flop on the ground. But before she could choose, her mother lay down with her back against the fence. Breakfast time, she called. A thrill ran through Flora. She was hungry. So were her brothers. Flora dove for a good spot, only to find herself bumped and turned aside. There's enough for everyone, Mother said. Nobody listened. But Flora, the firstborn of the litter, had sturdy shoulders and strong back legs. When she failed to push through, she had other ways to make room for herself. Standing on her brother's ear usually created an opening. And if that didn't work, she'd use her sharp teeth. Flora found that if she chomped down on her brother's tail, she could count on a loud squeal in an open space. A girl had to fight for her food in this family, except against little Alfred, the runt. If he started to sniffle, Flora made room for two. After breakfast was nap time, little pigs with their tummies round and full of milk flapped against one another on the ground. But Flora thought Piglet spent too much of their lives sleeping. Today, she pawed her brother's knee. Sam, wake up! Mmm, Grun Sam grunted. He didn't move. Flora went over to Tommy. His ear was flapped open. Boom! Tommy's head snapped up. Nap time's over, she said. Go away. Tommy laid his head back down and folded his ear closed. Flora turned to Sam. She thought about standing on his tail. Just behind her, someone else grunted. When Flora turned, she saw Alfred smiling and twitching in his sleep. Alfred, she walked over to her littlest brother who opened his eyes. It's time to go exploring. Flora, I have a full tummy and that always makes me sleepy. Besides, we explored the whole pen yesterday and there wasn't one new exciting thing. What about the nail I just dug up? Alfred closed his eyes. New, but not exciting. Fine, Flora turned her back. She had to admit it was right, but if anything exciting ever did pop up, she'd be the first to see it, if she kept exploring. She trotted over to the manure pile, Flora's favorite lookout. 
It was the highest point in the pig pen and the only place Flora could hope to see anything interesting beyond her small world. She gazed past the shade of the pig pen roof to where the world was bright and sunny. Sunny junk heap, sunny grass, sunny cornfield, sunny gravel road. A familiar sound floated in. Flora cocked her head to one side to listen. Dogs, they were barking again. Now, seeing a dog would be exciting. What would it look like, she wondered. Woolly like a sheep, horned like a bull, single hooked like a horse, or double hooked like a pig. One thing was for sure, dogs made more noise than all the other animals put together. As the barking died down, Flora tilted her head up at the pig pen roof. Sunlight poured through the little holes, showing bits of dust in the air. Flora moved so that one point of light landed on her front leg. This was as much direct sun as Flora ever got. She lay down carefully so the spot of light stayed on her leg, and she watched it. It looked like a little star. Mother had told her about the points of light that came out at night, like a hundred eyes watching and twinkling above the world. Flora wished she could see those eyes. When the spot of light moved off her leg, she scrambled up. This time, looked all around. Behind her was the empty pig pen. To her right was the open side of the barn. Flora could see through it to the three horse stalls on the far wall. Only one had housed a horse for the last three days. Nessie was quiet except her hooves knocked against the wooden walls. Flora turned back to the sunshine and the junk heap. There were old tires, machine parts, wavy rafts of chicken wire, and broken tools that lay where they had been tossed. In the middle was a wheelbarrow with no wheel, and in its body was a green garden hose, hose coiled around a white fur ball. Flora looked again. Was that a dog? The fur ball stretched and yawned. It had a black ear and a mouthful of sharp teeth. Flora's front knees trembled. This was new and exciting. The creature stepped down from the wheelbarrow and walked carelessly toward the pig pen. Should Flora warn her mother? No, she could handle the intruder. She crept off the manure pile and pushed herself close to the fence where the fur ball might enter. If it was foolish enough to step inside a pig pen guarded by a fierce, sharp-hoofed piglet. She hadn't woken up today expecting a fight, but this was going to be very satisfying. If some prowling food thief thought it could sneak into her home, Flora was just the pig to teach it a lesson. She crouched. Sure enough, the fur ball slipped like water through the slats in the fence. This was it. The moment Flora would leap and the fur ball sat down and began to lick itself. Flora managed to stop from pouncing to watch. Its little pink tongue went in and out of its toothy mouth, licking the fur in front and then working from one side to the other. This was perfect. It was so busy it would never see her coming. Flora gathered herself and then launched. Hiya! She squealed. That is the end of chapter one. On to chapter two. The stranger didn't twirl around or scream in fear. Instead, it flew to the top of a fence post in one motion, as easily as if it were a bird, and sat blinking. Flora slid to a stop and put her front feet up on the post. Did I scare you? Terrified, the furry white creature gave itself another lick. I've got rock hard hooves and a mouthful of sharp teeth. Flora opened her mouth to show how sharp they were. You'd better be careful. Such terrible weapons. I'm lucky I'm still alive. My name is Flora and I'm a pig, said Flora. I'm in charge around here and she stopped because the animal had turned its head to lick its back. Flora wasn't sure it was listening. And I like your fur because it's all white like mine. 
Laura didn't know why she had said this to the animal that might be an enemy. Are you a dog? My name is Luna and I am most certainly not a dog. I'm a cat and I like your spirit, she said. We could be sisters, said Flora. Luna gazed at Flora for a moment. We're not sisters, and she went back to licking. Flora walked to the other side of the post to get a different view. Why do you keep doing that? Doing what? Licking yourself? It's how I keep clean. Flora stuck her tongue out and gave her shoulder a lick. It tickled her tongue in a way that didn't feel very good, and besides, it tasted funny. I don't like myself, Flora announced, and rubbed her tongue on the top of her mouth to get rid of that tickly feeling. I can tell, said Luna, and that is why we're not sisters. A soft breeze made Luna's fur move like a wave. Can I feel your fur? Flora asked. Luna hopped down. Now that's a request a cat can never refuse. She rubbed her white fur along Flora's side and her tail slipped under Flora's neck. Flora had never felt anything so soft, not even Mother's underbelly or Alfred's silky ears. Luna walked over to the fence and turned. I hope you don't mind if I come back to visit someday, even if we're not sisters. I'll try to remember to stay away from those Rock hard hooves of yours. Flora's heart lurched. You're going already? Luna looked surprised. I'm a cat. I come and go as I please. And she slid between the boards and disappeared. A squeal slipped out. Flora couldn't help it. She wasn't proud of such piggy noise, but she wanted so much to be able to come and go as she pleased and her best chance for adventure of a whole day, the whole week, and even a whole month was leaving. Hey, relax. One of Luna's eyes appeared in the crack. Flora made her voice behave. Take me with you. You're not a cat, you're a pig, remember? I wandered around and see things, and you, you stay in this pig pen and do, I don't know, pig stuff. But I don't want to do pig stuff, Flora whispered. I want to wander around. Why? Luna poked her head back inside the pen. I'm curious, said Flora. Hmm. Luna rubbed the side of her head against the board. Curious. That's a good quality. It shows you have spirit. Though some think being curious means you're looking for trouble. I'll go do some wandering. Then I'll come back and tell you what I found. Stay out of trouble. She drew her head back through the crack. But I don't want to stay out of trouble, Flora called. I want something to happen around here. There was a silence, and then Luna's head poked through the fence once more. Oh, it will. You don't have to look for trouble. It will find you. And when that happens... Luna disappeared, but her voice continued. Keep up that great spirit and make a plan, because nine lives is just a state of mind. What plan? Flora raced back to the top of the manure pile and watched Luna's tail waving. Luna's tall tail waving rounded the corner of the barn. Flora sighed with a heart born for adventure and hooves stuck in a pen. Flora couldn't help thinking that trouble might be a good thing. And that is the end of chapter two. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoy the rest of the book.